guys. Um, I've, I wanted to put together a quick yoga class for you um, so that you can turn on any time that you're looking for a nice workout or um, just to get into your body for a bit. Um, so whenever you're feeling stressed or just, you know, need some time to yourself, don't feel like going out to a yoga class, you can turn this on. Of course, I'd love to promise that I can do this every single month, but my mom can tell you that I've, it's been like six months that I promised to do this. I'm finally getting around to it. So this is a big deal. Um, but yeah, maybe we'll do this more if, if, if you like it. But um, we're going to do kind of uh, an all levels class today. Um, so if you're familiar with um, vinyasa yoga, um, just breath to movement, we'll be doing that. Um, but instead of going through chaturanga, we're just going to do um, plank, low cobra, tabletop, child's pose. Okay, so if you want to take the full vinyasa, um, high to low plank, up dog, down dog, you're more than welcome to, but um, I'll be teaching the, the latter combination. Um, okay, enough talking. I'm gonna start in a seated meditation. So grab four, um, oh actually, let me rewind. You're gonna need a few things for class today. Um, something to sit on, so if you have a yoga block, or meditation cushion, great blanket, even blanket would work just fine. Or um, a pillow, anything that's gonna allow your hips to get higher than your knees when we sit is ideal. Um, and then you'll need a yoga block. If you don't have a yoga block, which a lot of us don't, um, you can grab for something in your kitchen or a shoe box or just something that's gonna allow you um, additional support. So I have a can of pumpkin, you can grab for a jar of spaghetti sauce, um, anything really about yay size will work. Um, so let's get started. Seated meditation. Grab for your uh, pillow, your blanket, whatever it is. Place it on your mat. And for this pose, you can either come into Sukhasana, easy cross-legged pose. Um, if it's more comfortable for you to um, sit on your shins and kind of snuggle the pillow up to provide a little bit of support there. Um, the pillow, it feels kind of funky to me to do it that way, so I'm going to take Sukhasana. So again, we just want the hips to be higher than the knees. So if you notice you come onto this pillow and you're like, oh, I still kind of feel like my back is rounding and my pelvic bowl is kind of tipping backwards. Okay, grab for another pillow, if you have one nearby, and sit up even higher. And you'll know you've got the right length when you feel the pelvic bowl kind of tipping forward, your tailbone's grounding, and you're finding length in your spine. Okay, leave it there, close your eyes, place your hands, on your thighs and take just a few deep breaths here. Kind of notice how you're feeling. I don't often, <clears throat> or at least I don't often, check in with myself throughout the day asking how I'm feeling. And so it can be really helpful, you know, when you sit down to meditation, just simply, how's it going? How are you feeling? Maybe you're dealing with a little bit of anxiety or um, busyness, chaos, right? You're do list super long and you're kind of just thinking like oh I could be doing a million and one other things right now so just notice you're feeling maybe you're feeling calm maybe you're you know super pumped to get on your mat and and relax whatever it is just notice no answer is 
right or wrong. And let the breath be supernatural here. It's just easy, just how you would normally breathe. Weston in the other room potentially listening like I'm just very hyper aware right now and I'm, and I'm realizing that I'm trying to sit with it and so as we sit here and we breathe just feel kind of the rise and fall of your chest and inhale feel your feel your belly filling with air Feel sort of like a sense of rooting in your sit bones, right? So you can really root down through your sit bones, and that'll allow you to find greater height in your spine, more length here. And let's do a quick uh, body scan. So starting from the part of your body that's touching the floor, it's likely the shins. venturing all the way up through the crown of your head, what might you be able to soften? So if you kind of look at how your body is feeling right now, where are you holding extra tension that you might be able to send some love to, to relax that area? Okay, for me, it's always, when I sit in this pose, initially it's always my hip flexors that are really holding on for dear life to keep me sitting upright. Um, for you, you know, your shoulders might be up by your ears if you can draw them down your back. Just notice. And once you've done your body scan, you've figured out where in the body you can find a greater sense of ease start to focus on the quality of the breath, right? So we're again, bringing the attention back to the inhales and the exhales without changing anything. Can you notice what your breath feels like, right? It's, it's, you might have a regular meditation practice. If you don't, this can feel kind of bizarre, right? It's like you breathe all the time. It's not that interesting. But I encourage you to get interested in it, right? So we look at the breath. Is it kind of great breathing short breaths or, or maybe more elongated, deep breaths? Is it smooth or more rigid if you're dealing with a little bit of congestion? temperature like. So when you breathe in through your nose and out through your nose, what is the temperature of your breath as it hits your top lip? Take just a few more breaths here, being totally present with your breathing in your body as easy as it is to let the mind wander <clears throat> towards if you're gonna like this yoga class or you know if you're going to be able to do all the poses, what you're having for dinner tonight, you know, all of the different things on your to-do list. Try as much as you can to let the thought come, acknowledge and let it pass. Come into your mind, 
Now let's work on other tasks. And we'll be doing that all across the line. The tendency in the mind is to always wander, bringing the attention back to the breath. And we'll say it again, there is no right or wrong way to do this. One more breath here, being fully present. And gently begin to blink your eyes open, finding a soft gaze, and being mindful of any props that are that you're sitting on. Just take them out from underneath you, set them aside. And we'll come into tabletop pose. So you'll stack your shoulders over your wrists, hips, over your knees. And we'll just flow through a few uh, cat cows here. On your inhale, you'll drop your belly, open up through your spine for cow pose. Exhaling round through your upper back as you push the mat away for cat. Inhale, round. Okay, pull your mat back towards you, tailbone high. Exhaling, take up space. Pull belly to spine, let your neck be heavy, your head be heavy. Inhale for cow pose, pull your shoulders on your back as you lengthen. Exhale for cat. One more round, inhale. You'll walk your hands forward. As you come to um, neutral spine, you'll walk your hands forward about a handprint. Tuck your toes, lift your hips for downward facing dog. So you come into downward facing dog, it might be the first one of your day. Start to bend through one knee and then through the other. You're starting to warm up through your body. I'm just taking my sweater off. And notice how, how the pose feels, right? So really start to feel into your body. You know, this may be the first time you've done yoga in a really long time. It might be the first time you've done it ever. Um, but ultimately, you've been in your body up until now. You know what it means, right? So if you're feeling like you need a little bit more space in your hips, you can move them to the right and then the left. Do whatever feels good here. You can float through a child's pose. Maybe you bend one elbow and the other. Really feel into it. Again, getting interested in the pose. And then we'll come to, come to um, steady down dog here. You'll bring your feet about uh, hips width distance at the back of the mat. So you'll find a steady gaze in between your toes. And then see that your hands are shoulder width distance in front of you. You're pushing into the thumb and index finger and roll your outer arms back. Okay, I'm going to do that motion again. Outer arms back. When you do that, you'll notice you'll find more space in your upper back. And one more thing, if you're dealing with tight hamstrings, you can take a bend in your knees and then shoot your tailbone up towards the sky Push into your hands, straighten your arms to find the length in your spine. And then eventually over time, you'll be able to take the bend out of your knees, keeping that, that shifting of the pelvis up towards the ceiling. Yeah? Let's take one more breath here. And gently walk your hands back towards your feet. Your own pace, no rush. You'll take your feet hips with distance at the back of your mat, grab for opposite elbows, take a generous bend in your knees so that your belly can rest on your thighs, and just relax your head and neck here. It might feel good to sway side to side. And you can shake your head yes. Really help. 
calls the nervous system. If you're ever feeling anxious, just flop into one of these and it can help slow the breath and, and calm you. On your inhale, you'll push into your shins, lengthen your chest long. Right, so I'm pushing my thighs back as I reach the spine out of my hips. Exhale, forward fold. This time you can get a little deeper. This time start to push your, your chest back towards your shins. And release your hands. Let's walk forward here, back into dog pose. Push into your hands. Straighten your arms. Again, if you want to take a little bend in your knees, you can shift your tailbone higher. Breathe here. And on your next inhale, you'll gaze forward. Start to walk your feet towards the top of your mat. Spine standing forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Push into your shins. Reach the crown of your head long. Exhale, forward fold, hinge at your hips. Inhale, come all the way up with up strong thighs. Reach your arms high. Exhale, palms to heart center, Tadasana. Inhale, push into your feet, reach your arms high. So this seems like a super easy pose, right? We're just standing here, but it's so much more than that. Fire up through your thighs, right? Push into the ball mounts and the heels of your feet. Aim your tailbone down towards the ground, right? So the tendency here in this pose, especially when your arms are up, is to splay the ribs. So can you shorten the distance between your hips and your ribs? Reach your arms up. Exhale, hinging at the top of the hip crease, forward fold. Inhale, spine halfway lift. Lengthen the crown of your head forward. Exhale, plant your palms, step back to plank pose. Okay. So breathe here. Thighs are super fired up, like we never left the standing pose, okay? Can you pull your thumb and index finger towards one another? That'll Feel the, you'll feel the outer arms fire up here, and then round your spine like cat pose. Start to reach your chest through your upper arms. Keep that low belly lift for three. You can do it too. One, on my count we lower down for five. Four elbows in by your side, low belly hugs in, no dipping, right? Keep low belly lifted for three, two, one, and we're down. On your belly, bring your palms by your low ribs, push into all 10 toes, so toes are untucked. Lift just your chest, cobra pose. Exhale, tap your forehead down. Inhale, lift just your chest for cobra pose. One more, tap your forehead. Inhale. Push into your hands, coming back to tabletop pose, and then child's pose. You'll bring your knees wide, start to sit your bum under your heels, rest your forehead on the mat, and breathe. On your next inhale, you'll rise up to tabletop pose, tuck your toes, lift your hips, find downward facing dog. Take two more sun A's here. So on your next inhale, you'll bend your knees, look between your hands, step or hop to the top of the mat. Exhale, inhale halfway, exhale fold. Inhale, strong thighs, reach up. Exhale, palms to heart. Inhale, arms go high. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, halfway. I should mention something. I'm keeping my fingertips on the ground. You can always bring your hands to your shins or the ground. Okay, so halfway. 
Exhale, step back for plank pose. Take a breath here. Lower all the way onto your belly. Come down. Elbows, 90 degree bend. Palms by your low ribs. Push into your toes with the cobra just for a breath. Exhale, tabletop pose. Inhale here. Exhale, downward facing dog. Take a deep inhale. Open mouth, let it go. On your next inhale, bend your knees, gaze between your hands, step or hop, top of the mat. Inhale, find halfway lift. Exhale, fold down. Inhale, reach your arms up. Exhale, palms to heart. Inhale, arms go high. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lengthen. Exhale, plant your palms, plank pose. Step to the back of your mat. Come forward about an inch, lower all the way down. Untuck your toes, lift just your chest, cobra. Exhale, tabletop. Inhale, downward facing dog. Good, breathe here. Your next inhale, bend your knees, gaze between your hands. Step or hop to the top of your mat. Exhale, fold. Inhale, Utkatasana, chair pose. So step your feet to touch, reach your arms up overhead, sit your hips low, and make sure that you can see all 10 toes. So if you can't, shift your hips further back until you can. And then resist the urge here to just dump your low belly on your thighs, okay? Can you scoop your low belly up? Lengthen your arms, reach them back in line with your ears. Sit one inch deeper. Yeah, where's, where's your mind right now? Are you thinking about how much you are hating this? It's a hard pose. Breathe here, lengthen your spine right out of your hips. One more breath. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale for halfway. Push into your shins, reach the crown of your head long. Exhale, step to plank pose, step to the back of your mat. Shift one inch forward, come all the way down onto your belly. Inhale for Cobra Pose, lift just your chest. Exhale, tabletop. Inhale, dog. Exhale here. Deep inhale. Open mouth, exhale. On your next inhale, step your feet to touch at the back of your mat. Lift your right leg high. Okay, so notice the tendency here to want to open that right hip. Okay, can you keep internally rotating the right thigh so that your toes point straight down? Inhale, find length here. Exhale, place your foot in between your palms. Low lunge. So your foot might not get there. It might, it might get here. Okay, so you can grab a hold of your right foot, pull it up towards the top of your mat. Spin your back heel down, warrior two, come on up. So from here, find heel to arch alignment in your feet. So your feet should be right underneath your hands, okay? This right thigh is externally rotating, okay? So you can actually assist your thigh open. So if you grab for your right thigh, you can open it, rotate it more to the right. Left thigh is neutral, so it actually helps to pigeon toe your left toes slightly. So rather than having them be parallel with the back of the mat, can you pull them in a little bit? Drop your hips low. Inhale, long out of your side body here. Exhale, drop both shoulders down on the back. Inhale, reach your right arm forward. Place your right elbow on your right knee. Reach your left arm up by your ears. So from here, push your bum back and then hook your right hip underneath you. Yeah, pull both shoulders down your back. 
maybe final touch, you can spin your chest open towards the ceiling. Keep using this contact with your elbow and your knee to push that knee open towards the right. So notice the tendency here, let that knee drop in, keep pushing it open. Breathe length through your left side body. One more breath. Inhale, pull the left arm back. Reach the right arm high. Reverse. So lunge nice and deep into that front knee. So push your right heel into the floor. Breathe through all of your side ribs here. Reach the right arm long. Take a breath. Inhale. Exhale. Plant your palms. Step back to plank pose. Take a breath here. Inhale, shift one inch forward. Come all the way down onto your belly. Untuck your toes, lift just your chest for cobra. Exhale, tabletop. Inhale as you pull back, downward facing dog. Exhale. Take a deep inhale, walk both feet to touch. Lift your left leg high. Exhale, place your foot in between your palms. Again, you might want to grab for your ankle. Pull it in. Okay, spin your back heel down. Inhale, warrior two on the second side. Okay, so in here before, make sure that both feet are underneath your hands. And then see that this left knee is tracking in line with the second and third toe. Okay? If it's not, if it's caving in, spin the inseam of this back right thigh up until your left hip pulls back. Yeah, does that make sense? Inseam of the back left thigh pulls up until this left hip pulls back. Notice then if your right hip popped forward, can you push from the root of the right thigh back? Set your hips one inch deeper. Breathe length through your spine here. Find a super proud chest. One more breath. Exhale, left elbow, left knee, extended side angle. Reach your right arm up by your ear. And breathe. Let your hips sink nice and low. Again, if it was helpful, move your bum behind you and then hook your left hip underneath your right to find a little bit more space. Keep lunging nice and deep into that left knee. Reach your right arm up and by your ears. Maybe, maybe start to spin at the base of your rib cage. Spin up towards the ceiling. One more breath here with joy. Inhale, reverse. Reach your right arm back towards your right thigh. Reach your left arm up. Reverse warrior here. Lunge nice and deep into that left knee. Can you bring a little bit more weight into your right thigh here for an inhale? Exhale, plant your palms. Step back to plank pose. Take an inhale, shift one inch forward, lower all the way onto your belly. Untuck your toes for cobra pose, lift. Exhale, tabletop. Inhale, pull back. Exhale, downward facing dog. Should we flow through that one time? That might feel good. So on your inhale, you'll bend your knees, gaze between your hands, hop or step to the top of your mat. Exhale. Inhale for halfway, lengthen your spine. Exhale, fold. Inhale for Utkatasana, chair pose. Hips low, fingertips high. Stay here for just a breath. Spin a little deeper. Exhale, fold. Inhale, halfway lengthen. Exhale, plank pose. Step back. Take a breath here. Inhale, reach forward. Lower all the way down. Inhale for cobra pose. Exhale, tabletop. Inhale, lift. Downward facing dog. Step your feet to touch the back of the mat. Inhale, lift your right leg high. Exhale, place your foot in between your palms. Again, use your hand to assist the foot. Spin your back heel down, warrior two. Exhale here. Good, inhale, right knee, right elbow. 
Bring your left arm up by your ear. Exhale. Inhale, reverse your warrior, flip your right palm. Keep the lunge. Exhale, chaturanga. Oof, I need plank pose. Step back to plank, chip one inch forward, lower all the way down. Inhale, cobra. Exhale, tabletop. Inhale, pull back. Exhale, down dog. Step your feet to touch the back of the mat. Inhale, lift your left foot high. Exhale, place your foot in between your palms. Inhale, spin your back heel down, warrior two. We rise. Exhale, extended side angle. Left elbow, left knee. Reach your right arm up by your ear. Inhale, reverse. Flip your left palm, reach through your side ribs. Exhale, plant your palms, top of the mat. Plank pose. Take a breath here, lower down. Inhale, sort of cobra. Peel both shoulders down the back. Exhale, tabletop. Inhale, downward facing dog. Exhale. Inhale. Good. On your next inhale, you'll bend your knees, gaze between your hands, step or hop, top of the mat. Exhale. Inhale, halfway lengthen your spine. Exhale, fold. Inhale, reach your arms all the way up. Urdhva Bahasasana. Exhale, palms to heart. How are we doing? Okay, grab four glass of water. Take a little, a little break here. Um, and maybe towel off. And we'll get started um, for our second our first standing series, sorry. So take a rest. I hear your heart beating. Mine sure is. Let me grab her some water. Where, where we're going next. You'll step to the, um, the center of your mat. Bring your hands um, one on top of the other up by your chest. So find a, find a proud chest here. Bend your knees. Find sort of sense of buoyancy here. And then on the inhale, shoot your feet out wide. A little hop, okay? Yeah. You'll bring your heels in, toes out, and then sink your knees here. You'll place your hands onto your knees and let your hips be super heavy here. So arms straight, push into your knees to lift up out of your pelvis. So this should feel super, super good on your spine. Yeah, I'm feeling it. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so sink your hips, lengthen through your spine. Inhale. Exhale, drop your right shoulder to the midline. Gaze over your left shoulder. Little twist. Inhale to center. Drop your left shoulder to the midline. Gaze over your right. You might hear some cracks in your spine if you're lucky. Inhale to center. Exhale, drop your right shoulder. Really push into your knees to find length. Inhale, center. Exhale, left shoulder dips. Inhale, find center. Exhale, push into your feet. This time, heels slightly out, toes kind of pigeon-toed here. As we inhale, um, let's place the palms on the hips. Reach your chest tall. Inhale, puff up through your chest. Exhale, hinging at the top of the hip crease. Forward fold, Prasarita Padottanasana. So from here, 
So place your hands under your shoulders. That's enough. Otherwise, you can start to walk your hands back. So bending the elbows straight back as you pull your chest down towards your shins. Let your head be heavy, let your neck be neutral. And this seems like an easy pose, but I really want the legs to be super fired up here. So you're hugging both thigh bones in towards the hip socket for stability. And your hamstrings, yes, they're, they're stretching, but your quads should be super fired up and engaged, okay? Tip just the tiniest bit of weight forward into your toes. Lift your sit bones high. Let's take one more breath. The inhale, start to walk your hands forward underneath your shoulders, lift your chest, bring your hands to your hips, come up with a flat spine, take a breath here. Spin your left toes out, I realize that I'm not mirroring here, so you might be a little confused, so just, you know, go <laughs> whichever side you're on, I'm on, I'm on my left side, I'm going to spin my left toes out. Right. I'm going to bring my arms out to a T, and before I do anything, start to pull the left hip back. So again, you're feeling this external rotation of the left thigh, and you'll notice that causes the right hip to kind of drop forward. Can you push that right hip back while maintaining this external rotation of the left thigh? Okay. Inhale, find length, reach your sit bones back, keep the external rotation of the left thigh, as you lower your left hand either to the ground, your ankle, or your can of pumpkin, right? There's just like a little bit of, of length here. So if bringing your hand to the outside edge of your foot is too much, you can always just keep it on the inside. It's a little bit more supportive. So from here, you'll keep internally rotating this right thigh. So Inseam of the right thigh lifts up to pull your left hip back. And then like a tube of toothpaste is how I like to think of it. From your pelvis, reach length through your spine like you're squirting out a tube of toothpaste through both sides equally, right? So that you can feel the extension in your right side of your body. But we're really going for some length in the left side too, right? And then we'll spin the rib cage up towards the ceiling. So you'll pull your left, start to pull your left navel towards the right. Maybe gaze up towards your right hand if it feels okay on your neck. And then be sure to pull both shoulders down the back here. The tendency is to let them pop forward, especially when we spin the chest up. Can you keep dropping both shoulders down your back as you reach your chest long for one more breath? Inhale, push into your left toes, start to rise. Square off your feet here, move your can of pumpkin, and we're back where we came from, yeah. So this time, again, heels in, toes out, bend your knees, goddess pose is what this one's called. Okay, so you can hold onto your knees for support. If you want to go further, you'll take your hands to the back of your head, okay? So inhale here, find length. Exhale, drop the left shoulder, left elbow to left knee. Open up through your right side. Inhale, come back to center. Right elbow, right knee, open. Everything is burning. Come back to center, left elbow, left knee, breathe. Inhale to center, knees keep opening wide. Right elbow, right knee. Breathe. Are you breathing? Inhale, center. Straighten out through your legs. Parallel your feet again. Slightly pigeon toes, so toes can turn in just ever so slightly. Palms, um, interlace your fingertips at the base of your spine. So let your um, interlaced fingertips be on your tailbone. You can actually see me do this one. Using this contact to Push your tailbone down, right? Inhale, lift up out of your chest. Exhale, fold, hinging at your hip crease. Release. Oh, I should mention too, if 
this clasp is difficult for you, the interlaced fingertips that ache your side, you can grab for um, a belt or a tie or something with your hand, just so you can get that external rotation of the shoulders and really start to open up through the chest. Or if you can grab your fingertips, great. Let them come above your head. I should mention there are no awards for yoga. You don't get an award if you don't have to use a strap. We're just trying to breathe space into the parts of our body that need it. So both of you, actually, yeah, so mom and Aunt Linda, I know you guys spend a lot of time on the computer or bending down, playing with little children. So it's a lot of rounding in the spine. So this really lets the shoulders start to open and create more space. Let's have one more breath here. Let your head be heavy. Breathe length into your spine. And then release your fingertips underneath your shoulders. Lengthen your spine. Place your hands on your hips. Reach your head up. This time, right toes out. Left toes slightly, slightly pigeon-toed. Again, just like in Warrior Two, you'll bring your hands out to a T, seeing that your hands are right above your ankles. Yeah. Grab for your can or your your yoga block, make sure that it's on the right side of your foot. If you took it on the inside of your foot, that's okay too. So let's start, let's get into the legs here. So again, this right thigh is gonna externally rotate here. The left hip wants to come forward, keep pushing it back. Uh-huh. Putting the right thigh, let's externally rotate. Reach your right arm forward, 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 bump your hips back, 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 back. Exhale. Place your right palm either to your can of pumpkin or your block. Your ankle is another option. Reach your right arm high. Okay, so from here, again, get the work in the legs again. So keep externally rotating. Pull that right hip back. Resist the urge to let the left hip dump forward. Push it back. And then notice if you are hyperextending in that right knee. So Hyperextension just means that you go past straight, right? If you ever see someone with like, their knees look like they're actually like going past straight. Okay, so if that's happening with your right leg here, the work for you is to push this calf forward. Find a tiny, tiny micro bend here. So it's gonna stay super engaged. You're not dumping, okay? So all of the, both legs are super, super strong here. And then from your, from your pelvis, Squirt your spine out long. Reach the crown of your head long. Pull both shoulders down your back. And then maybe, maybe, maybe start to spin your chest open from the base of your rib cage up towards the ceiling. Maybe take your gaze at your left hand. If that feels like you're putting strain on your neck, gaze down towards your right foot. And we'll just be here for one more breath. Feeling so Super powerful in this pose. Last breath here. Inhale, push into your back foot as you rise. Exhale, square off through your foot. Bend your knees, find the sense of buoyancy. Reach your arms out long. As we inhale, hop to center. Tadasana. Good. Okay. Um, let's see, where do we want to go next? Let's do some nice little um, hip stretch here. So come to uh, downward facing dog. Step back, big arm dog. Take a deep inhale here. Open mouth, let it go. Your next inhale, you'll step your feet to touch the back of your mat. Reach your right leg high. Exhale, place your foot to the outer edge of your right hand. Okay, again, you might have to grab for your foot, assist it forward. So your hands are on the inside of your right foot here. So from here, you might want to stay lifted. This might be plenty for you, yeah? Or you can grab for your block if you have it. You can come down to forearms on the block, but 
frankly, I, I'm feeling a little tight today, so I'm going to stay lifted. You can even use your block or your can to find more length here. So if you're feeling like even just being on your hands is too much, you can grab for um, your, your can to assist you or your shoe box. And just breathe into where you feel this one. Try and let your head, so if you tuck your chin and kind of let your head be heavy and release through your neck. Let's take one more breath here. Inhale, gaze back through center. Start to find left hand's going to be your foundation, reach your right arm high for easy twist. Yeah, so in this one, keep pulling your right hip back and then lunge into that right knee, okay? It'll help spare the hips. You can always, if you're looking for more of a challenge here, you can tuck your back toes and lift your left leg off the ground. If you're doing that, keep lifting from the root of that left thigh bone up, okay? And then keep bending into your right knee, otherwise stay with the back knee on the ground for just a nice, easy twist from the uppermost part of your back here. Have one more breath here. Exhale, place your right hand down. Step back to downward facing dog. You get to down dog, take a deep inhale. Open mouth, exhale. Step your feet to touch the back of your mat. Lift your left leg high this time. Exhale, place your left leg to the outside of your left hand. You can assist the leg if you need to. Drop your right knee down. Again, stay lifted here if that's plenty. I know it is for me. Or drop to your elbows. Grab for a prop. And then start to ease into it. So let your head be heavy. Breathing into where you feel it. Inhale, you'll slowly lift your head. Right hand's your foundation. Left arm high. Easy twist. Again, the work here is pulling both shoulders down the back. Maybe you tuck your toes and lift your back leg. Hi, Bodie. <laughs> Keep blending deep into that left knee. Maybe spinning your chest open. Let's take one more breath here. Keep pulling that left hip back. Exhale, place your left hand on the ground. Step back to downward facing dog. Take a deep inhale when you get to dog. Open mouth, exhale. Shift forward into plank pose. Stack your shoulders over your wrists. Shift forward about an inch and on my count, we lower it down for five. Elbow shoot straight back for three, two, one. And we're down. Shalambhasana, locust pose. Zip up through your legs, interlace your fingertips at the base of your spine. And then inhale, lengthen your chest long. Exhale, lift everything up off the mat. Thighs, chest. Keep lifting, ground your tailbone into the mat. Breathe here for three. Keep reaching your chest and feet long for two. And one, lower one ear to the mat, rest here for just a minute, waggle your hips side to side. Gaze back to center. Let's do that one again. So you'll interlace your fingertips at the base of your spine. Zip up through your legs. Lift everything up off the mat, shoulders, thighs, we're going for length here, so lengthen your head long, reach your fingertips back towards your feet. Again, if you can't grab through your fingertips, grab for a tie or, um, you know, a ribbon or something that'll allow you to 
So pull those shoulders back. Breathe here for three, two, one. Lower and down. This time, place your elbows on the mat and then place your forehead down. And just massage, give yourself a little upper, upper back, upper shoulder massage here. Breathe. Massage that place in between your shoulders. Release your hands. Place them by your low ribs. Push up into tabletop pose. And then walk your knees forward. Come to seated. And then roll all the way onto your back. So come onto your back. Coming into bridge pose. So you'll lay down. Pull your feet in nice and close by your, by your bum. And then pull one shoulder underneath you. Actually, uh, robot arms here. So push your elbows in towards the mat. And then puff up through your chest. Pull both shoulders underneath your back. So you find sort of like some space in between your shoulder blades. And then lift your hips. Okay, so you're, you're puffing your chest back towards your chin. You can either grab for the outer edges of your mat as leverage here to pull both shoulders deep around your back. And pull up on the sides of your mat, or I should say, kind of pull the mat towards your feet. Or you, I shouldn't turn my neck in this pose. That's another key thing about bridge pose. Keep your neck straight up, okay? Because we are putting a little bit of pressure under the back of the head. Maybe interlace your fingertips at the base of your spine if you're able to. Otherwise, just keep the edges of your mat. Lift your hips high. Keep puffing your chest back towards your chin. And then breathe here for three. Three breaths. Knees are hips with distance for two. Relax your shoulders for one. Start to slowly roll down. Bringing your feet to the wide edges of your mat. Knees not to touch. Place opposite hand on opposite shoulder. Find a nice release in the low back. And then change out the clasp of your hands. Opposite hand on top. Bring your knees in towards your chest. Give yourself a squeeze. Let your left leg go long. So hang on to your right knee. Pull it in nice and close to your armpit. Find a little release in the low back here. Take a deep inhale, hug it in a little closer. Exhale, bring your knee across your body. It might feel good to bump your hips to the right a little bit. You can bring your right arm out to the side at a T shape or your cactus arms. And you can keep your left hand on your, on your right knee to, to support it. Maybe gaze over your right shoulder if it feels okay on your mat. Just close your eyes. Start to bring the attention back to your breath. Notice how your mind is reacting, notice what kind of thoughts keep popping up. And how do you feel now? Any less, any difference, maybe similar, just start to notice. And on your inhale, bring both knees in towards your chest, give yourself a little squeeze. 
and hang on to your left knee. Let your right leg go long. Just got a catch there. Keep it nice and close to your chest. Take a deep inhale. See if you can bring it in a little bit closer. Exhale. Bring your left knee across your body. Maybe bump your hips to the left, a bit deeper. Bring your left arm to the side. You get a few nice, satisfying pops and cracks. And you can keep your right hand on your, on your left leg here for support. Breathe length through both sides of your body. Maybe you can gaze over your left shoulder if that feels okay. Let this pose happen naturally, right? Without any muscular force, we're kind of just letting gravity do the work here and pull, pull you deeper into the twist. You'll pull both knees in towards your chest. Give yourself a squeeze. Happy baby pose. Grab for, so bend your knees, bring your knees like kind of to the outer edges of your, of your torso. And grab for the outside edges of your feet. That, if they feel like they're a little far away, you can always grab for the backs of your thighs. We just want the knees to come closer towards the ground. Flex your feet. Get a nice groin stretch here. You can rock one to the side, to the other side. Pulling the knees down, whether you have the backs of the thighs or the outside edges of the feet. Pull the knees down. And inhale, give yourself a squeeze. Make yourself into the tiniest ball. So grab for opposite elbows, Pull your forehead towards your knees. Lift your hips up off the mat. Lift your shoulders off the mat. Deep inhale. Make yourself into the tiniest little ball. Exhale. Final Shavasana. Take up space. Make this a nice restful pose for you. If you've got your pillows nearby, you can always place your pillows underneath your knees for a little more support. Lower down. Let your arms go by your side. Take a deep inhale. Open mouth. Exhale. Signaling to your body that it's time to rest. And in Shavasana, see if you can make everything equal. So your knees are equal from one another. If they're up on pillows, they're equal distance from each other. Where the floor meets your mat, meets your arms is equal on both sides. Your neck is equally elongated. And your tongue is resting effortlessly in the exact center of your mouth. Find a sense of balance, a sense of kind of equanimity in the body. Breathe, knowing for that these next few minutes, all you have to do is lie here, breathing in your body. There's no progress being made on your to-do list. space for yourself.
Bring your knees in, roll onto your right side, rest here for just a moment. Bring to mind one thing you're grateful for. Slowly using the strength of your arms, you'll push up, keeping your eyes closed onto a tall seat. you liked it. Um, I sh certainly had a good time. Uh, you know where to find me, so text me, email me, call me with any questions. I hope this felt good. Um, and let me know what you want next time, because I will totally do this again. Uh, I love you guys. Hope you enjoy the rest of your day, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.